High above the Atlantic Ocean at Panama stand the ruins of a fort, a monument to the past, a warning for the future. Here in the 1600s, the Spanish conquistadores brought vast treasures of gold and silver from South America, from the Aztecs. They built this fortress to protect the precious cargo while it waited for loading on ships bound for Spain. An impenetrable fortress, or so they thought. But the pirate Henry Morgan took them by surprise. He led his men through the jungle. He attacked from the rear, caught the Spanish off guard, destroyed the fort and its soldiers. Today, the fort stands as a reminder that Panama is vulnerable to attack. The Great Canal would be a prime target for an aggressor seeking to disrupt peace and security of the free world. Any attack, anywhere in the hemisphere would put all of the Americas in jeopardy. Security is a mutual problem, and throughout Latin America today, men of the United States Armed Forces are helping other countries build the strength to resist aggression. They teach a wide range of military and technical subjects, sometimes in English, sometimes in Spanish. Often they act as advisors, sharing their experience and training with others. Occasionally, they learn from their students. These stunts are not part of United States military training. The training for jungle warfare begins with learning what to expect. In the jungle, fear of the unknown is the greatest enemy. A different type of instruction is aimed at developing basic technical skills, automotive mechanics, radio communications, and the building trades. Many of these students will later return home to become instructors, spreading their new knowledge to all parts of Latin America. Of all the jobs being done by the United States military in Latin America, some of the most interesting come under the civic action programs. One of these is the Inter-American Geodetic Survey. The goal is to provide accurate maps for vast, uncharted areas of Mexico, Central and South America, the largest mapping enterprise ever undertaken. Most of the actual work is done by men of the 15 participating countries, backed up by support, instruction and technical advice from the United States Army. Only by using the most modern techniques of aerial photography could a mapping project on such a scale be carried out. The special cameras can distinguish a native village or even a fence line from 30,000 feet. Once he has gained the highly technical skill required, the map maker can turn the photos into an accurate map, provided he knows exact details of a few points in the photo. Getting those details is adventurous and often dangerous. These men may face the jungle's poisonous snakes and tropical heat on one assignment, while another group copes with lack of oxygen and below zero temperatures at altitudes of 16,000 feet and above. The maps that result are essential to military planning for defense of the hemisphere, and they also contribute to the growth and development of the countries of Latin America through their use in planning new industrial sites, roads, land clearing projects. Here is a dramatic example of what civic action can mean in human terms. 
On land like this, in Bolivia, many thousands of Indian farmers have for centuries tried in despair to grow enough to live on. This is also Bolivia, rich, fertile soil, but inaccessible and forbidding. Through the joint efforts of the Bolivian and United States governments, roads have been cut and land has been cleared. Thousands of acres of jungle have been turned into farmland. Each of the selected families gets a temporary house, clothing, livestock, and land. 30 acres of land enough to feed the family and provide income for all the basic needs. To date, some 2,000 families have been resettled in this one area alone. The United States advisors who assist on projects like this are helping people who in the past have known only deprivation to find a life with a great promise for the future. At times, civic action has its humorous aspects. When bandits were terrorizing areas of Colombia, the Air Force helped local citizens set up a radio net. In response to a call for help from a rancher, a military patrol goes out to catch a thief. suspicious character around turns out to be the rancher. Fortunately, this episode is not at all typical of the Latin American military in action. A much more accurate indication comes from joint exercises like Operation Unitas. This force is made up of ships from the United States and South American navies. The goals test our defenses against submarines and improve our abilities to work with each other as part of a single fighting team. It's valuable training for the submarines, too. This South American sub will try to penetrate the force to outwit the surface ships. On land as well, joint exercises are the best test of our ability to cooperate in defense of the hemisphere. Specially trained United States troops play the role of aggressor. If a Latin American country were attacked, how quickly, how effectively could others come to her support? That's the question this exercise seeks to answer. Through joint activities like this, the United States military is helping cement the ties that bind us to our southern neighbors. The ruins of Fort San Lorenzo will always remind us of the need for defense. By working together with the countries of Latin America, we can ensure the freedom and security of this hemisphere.